it's Karen the Weekend Craftaholic. Thanks for joining me. Today I've got another product review, an unboxing of the Bevel Quill this time. So if you're a subscriber to my channel, you'll see that I absolutely maxed out on all of these quill products. I absolutely love it. Being a new Cricut Maker owner, it was perfect timing for me. So I will put links below to my videos that I've done already. Um, I haven't done a fold quill one actually, but I know people are pretty familiar with that. Uh, I've started off with the singe quill and then the etch quill, and today I wanted to talk you through the bevel quill. Now the reason I decided to do these mainly was because I was having a look for videos myself before I purchased these. Couldn't find anything really online. So I thought I would share the unboxing and also first use and top tips with you. So before I actually get stuck in and open this, let's have a look what comes in the box. The, you get the four cutting machine adapters, you also get the bevel pen and you get some bevel board shapes. Now I have already had a look on scrapbook.com and I'm going to put links below so you know what I'm talking about. But basically you can buy these board shapes and even just board pieces themselves separately, which is great. So I know sometimes with these things it's hard to get the supplies to go with them. If you've seen my other videos you'll know that I run to rave about all of this packaging. I guess mainly because I bought it myself all in one hit, all of the tools. Because I really feel like this is the magic piece. Really they could have just sold that and then also sold this separately. But I'm not going to repeat what I've said in other videos. What I would say though is this is very looks very similar to the etch quill. Let me go get it. So this is the etch quill. I've already got the Cricut adapter and hopefully you can kind of see Let's see if we've got some white space underneath. Just the difference on the end. So the etch quill's obviously a very sharp point where the bevel quill's got a little, like a ball point almost. So I feel like it's more or less an embossing tool, but let's see how that goes. So let's just get this out of the package. So this is this so pretty straightforward, easy to use. You just fit on the adapter you need. And let's have a look what we get as part of the pack. And as I say, they do sell these separately as well. To be honest, having got the etch quill and also the singe quill, it looks like all of these shapes are similar throughout. You get the same kind of tags, geo tags, banners, arrows, gift tags, circle shapes. I feel like they're all the same designs, just in different materials, which is actually pretty cool now I've realised that. And I like the fact here you've got the rose gold with the silver and then the traditional gold as well. So we've got lots of goodies to play with. Do sell them separately though. I have ordered some of these so I can make my own shapes. Because obviously you can still cut on these as well as bevel. So what does bevel mean? I guess it is just embossing. It's going to leave a little indentation. Can you see like this? and like the lid and that's what we're going to try and do today so you can see if you've not seen any of your videos this works well with all of the main leading brands and they're pretty straightforward to use so whilst I don't feel we'll need to go through the instructions we will quickly look at them it shows you the different codes for the different adapters and how you then put it into your machine because this isn't a Cricut, I'm using a Cricut Maker obviously, it's not one of the branded products, you will need to, instead of using the emboss option, you will need to just use the draw function because you're going to put it in the left hand side in tool adapter A, which is where you would normally do all of your drawing. You can see here as well, it just tells you again how to set it up. So let's head on over to the design studio and I will show you first impressions of the bevel quill. To show you the first cut that I did, so I'd obviously not centred the piece very well onto the chipboard or the bevel piece, but so I did cancel the cut before it's finished. But even so, it doesn't seem to be making that much of an impression. It looks a bit more impressive on camera than it does in real life. So I think maybe I've just chosen the wrong product. So I'm going to do it again on a different chipboard piece, hopefully centred this time, and instead I'm going to choose the actual chipboard setting as well, see if that gives a more impressive depress or bevel of the image. Okay so this is my second pass and you can see here although I didn't get the image quite right on the centre 
a little bit better. This image is probably three inch wide. The bevel is pretty good considering how small this pattern is and the amount of geometric lines on it. But I have to say, it still doesn't look as good as, say, the impression you get on an embossing folder, if that makes sense. If you've got a manual die cut to machine like a scissors big shot, you'll know what I mean, and that's the kind of effect I expected to get. I say, it does look more impressive on camera, it looks quite flat in real life. Um, so I think I'm going to run through another one, but this time leave it in the machine and do two cuts, because it may well be that I'm not choosing the right setting. I'm using a standard grip mat, which seems fine, there doesn't seem to be any movement whatsoever. But, like I say, I would have imagined, um, I mean, this kind of emboss, you can see how really deep that is. I would just like a, a deeper emboss than what I've got. So, I'm going to run it through again and see if we get the time lucky. Okay, so I think this is the final one. And I actually ran this through four passes to get this. So let me just take this off the mat. You can see I've just done an initial K and that really does a really nice impression. So I think I've come to the conclusion it's not so much the mats you're using or the materials you're selecting, it's the number of passes that you run through on the machine that really makes a difference. And um, like I say, I'm really impressed with that now. Obviously if it was a more complicated design it would take a long time to get through the machine. That's why I changed it from the previous image just to this nice quick one. And let me show you the original one where we just run it through one pass and hopefully you can kind of see a comparison. I know it's not the easiest to see in this light with the camera, but hopefully you get a good impression. So my overall review of the product, not really sure how much use I'll get out of it. I don't know if I would have the patience for that. I'll probably just go back to my big shot to be honest, because one of the things I thought I would use it for would be background embossing and I think it would just take too long waiting for that to go through the machine. So this one would probably actually be a bit of a miss for me if I had to the option of getting my money back um, and purchasing again, I would probably say no, I'll just take my money back. But please don't let that put you off that. But does exactly what it says, good value for money still, especially with all the chipboard pieces. Not sure how long the actual pen nib would last itself, that little ballpoint, the way it impresses. And But but overall, it only took me maybe 20 minutes playing around with it to get an impression that I really liked. So it just goes to show when you get new products, you really do need to keep trying with different materials, different techniques, to just to get the best out of them. So I hope you enjoyed that. Please join me next time. Thank you for watching.